Hello everyone, I'm David Straley. This is Dave Hieronymus. Uh, he's Australian. <laughs> Good to know. Uh, hi, I'm Disbrew and I'm British. It's uh, quite a strange greeting, I'll be honest. Uh, what have you got for us today? Today, I'd love to speak with you all about uh, what we're doing for Netcode for Valorant. And I kind of want to go through behind the scenes technically, like what that means to you as the player and what you'll experience. That's awesome. I've been having a lot of fun in Valorant recently and it's a really nice palette cleanser after other games such as Warzone, which had so many issues with bullets going missing, getting shot around corners. And I only found out why that is so bad on Warzone a few days ago. Um, comparing it to Valorant, it's really night and day. And it's something I'm gonna show you later in the video, but for now, let's get straight back into it. So one thing that kind of rings really clear to us on Valorant and, and to our designers is our philosophy on competitive integrity. So I guess in essence, right, competitive integrity is that for every single game you play, whether you win or you lose, you are in control of the outcome. Through no fault of the other nine players or the game server, they will not hinder your experience. I mean, what this all means is that Valorant players should get some of the best network conditions in the industry with Riot Direct and with our 128 tick game servers. So, Riot Direct, it is Riot's ISP. Most games uh, via your local ISPs, you leave your house, bounce around a few different points, and then get to the game servers. And so, how do we have a better influence over the player experience? We decided to build our own ISP. So, the great thing about Riot Direct is it's Riot. Anywhere there is a hole, as we learn more about Valorant and Valorant players and where people are playing from, we can build that network. Like if you're in Morocco, hey, there's no point of presence there. We can decide, hey, like that's somewhere where there's a ton of players and so we want to bring a better experience to them. So we can extend that, invest in it, uh, wherever it makes sense for our players. See, now I love this. This is exactly my kind of thing. There's a lot of gaps there, but as they say, they can fill it in in the future. If there's people all over the place, that's where they can stick a new server, add more people into it. Now, this, the fact that they are investing such a huge amount of resources into getting people's ping down, getting lower packet loss. I'm not into networking. I don't even know how much of a benefit this will be. But even if this is for a small benefit, in fact, especially if it's for a small benefit, the fact they're willing to put this amount of resources into setting this up just to get a little tiny extra benefit, imagine the amount of effort and resources and time they will put into the really big stuff. When was the last time you saw that? When was the last time you felt that way about CSGO with the amount of the, their resources they, they put in? Or Overwatch, right? Overwatch is having Echo released tomorrow when I make this. Before that, the last hero in Overwatch was July 2019 with Sigma. And even at its peak, they only had three heroes, which would be Valorant agents, released every year. Uh, and their balance patches, you'd be lucky if a meta changed every two years. How long did triple tank last? That was horrible. Nobody seemed to give a damn. And the changes that came just didn't even fix the problem that was there. But here at Riot, doing things like this on just to try and shave a few milliseconds off a ping, this gives me a huge amount of hope for the future. And I, I really hope they follow through with this amount of attention to detail in the rest of the things. I, snappy servers are great. Hit detection is great. If you can do this with content as well, oh God, you're going to have a game that just stands the test of time. This is why I'm excited for Valorant. This is what I want. Just, just keep this kind of stuff coming and keep these dev blogs coming because this kind of information really gets me hyped for the future. I, I, this, is, this is just right up my street. Very happy, very excited. And this is just the beginning of our investment. We're only gonna make it better over time. We're gonna keep adding more points of presence, better routing paths, and expect to see this continue to improve. <laughs> I do, and I just wanna say I love this guy, right? I don't know if you saw it in the clip before. I don't know if you noticed it, but I love this guy and his vibrating head. The players, and so we wanna bring a better experience to them. So we can extend that. In how, does, how does networking infrastructure how can I help competitive integrity? It's through us minimize something called Peaker's Advantage. I've got a clip here of a player on the right peeking out on a player on the left. As the player peeks out, there's actually a window of time where he can see the opponent before the opponent sees him. This in its sense is like horrible for gameplay. We want to minimize this as much as possible. See, now this was the thing. I, I, I'd always heard about Pika's advantage in game, but I'm just, 
naturally aggressive in games. I play, I just hold that W key. I'm the first round the corner. I'm the guy peeking the corner. I just charge into the room. And I never realized I had some kind of innate advantage doing that before. And now in Valorant, I miss it. Please, somebody send help. I need it desperately. How does this happen? Why, why does this exist? Let me show you that as well. Uh, so I've made a small diagram to kind of demonstrate. We've got player A and player B. Uh, player A is stepping out on player B. And the reason for that actual delay is, is a network round trip from player A's computer to the game server down to player B. That entire loop takes that long before B realizes that A exists. So minimizing this loop is of the utmost importance for us maintaining competitive integrity. Let me kind of explain the player value in minimizing peaker's advantage. So one of the first examples I'll walk through is hit registration. If you look at this uh, snap, we have a, a red outline and a blue outline. The blue outline is what you see as a player when you shoot somebody, and the red outline is what the server sees when it is processing your shot. When you shoot at a player in a game, the time at which you take that shot is actually different from when the server is running. The server has actually already moved on in time and, and gone into like future state. So when it needs to evaluate whether you hit your shot or not, it needs to rewind gameplay, move all the players back in, in, in world to kind of find out to see if the shot lined up. Right. A lot of games out there in the shooter space offer 64 tick for free by default. So this is what goes back to what I was talking about before. He says, uh, oh, a lot of games have 64 tick rate. And they do. Overwatch has 64. CSGO has 64. That's all fine and dandy. But those games have fairly good hit, con hit registration. Warzone... Call of Duty Warzone has a tick rate of 12. Which is why if you've ever played that game and thought that the hit detection was ass and you were getting shot through walls and shot around corners, you're getting killed by things that just don't make sense. That's why their servers are ass. That's why playing Valorant feels so good. Carry on. If the server's running 64 tick, or you're kind of downsampled to your opponents. So even though you see something really smooth for yourself, players otherwise don't see it in that same way. And, and that kind of degrades the experience more than it should. Our old networking code running at 64 tick, this is kind of the output you see. Not good, not great, but the heads are like closely aligned, but, but not quite like lock on. Now I'll show you guys what we have with our new net code and running 128 tick servers. So players are almost exactly aligned from head to toe. So if you can see here, it's almost an exact alignment of the client's position and the server's position. Uh, but we can go one step further and state, hey, if a client has substandard tick beneath 128, we can actually upsample that for your better viewing as a remote client. Um, now, they can only actually give input 64 times a second, but what we do is we can guarantee the smoothness of the network delivery. So instead of seeing like choppiness in the updates, you'll see a little bit more smooth uh, stream of, of, of player movement. Um, and that just helps you for hit tracking. So when you're trying to follow with your rifle, your sniper, it's just easier to follow the player as they traverse across you know, the play space. Uh, we've kind of been working night and day for the last several months to make sure, hey, all, all the kinks are, are, are knocked out of this thing. This is as good as it can be because we know how bad it is as a player to have a situation where you, know, you go for the headshot, you land it, but the surface is nope. And we absolutely want to have that not be a thing for our game. You know, that, that is our top line goal. I think the biggest thing is you know, with this game being in development for so long, like. I hope we've met your expectations. I hope like you appreciate the care and the love that we've put into this game. We really do want to make a game that both that we enjoy as gamers and but that we think you will will really fall in love with and I think I just hope that everything is kind of meeting the mark there. But if we don't send us your bugs, send us your feedback <laughs> in a constructive way, not in a toxic way. <laughs> but uh, yes, we're we're always looking to improve. <laughs> hey, I can't make any promises. I am um pretty toxic at times uh but it tends to be when a game deserves it and from what i've seen a game from the time i've got to play it feels really crisp it feels really nice uh and especially compared to the games that i've been coming from before it's a real breath of fresh air this game has like i've said a lot of potential if they can get the content just putting this much attention to detail and giving these dev interviews it's really nice to see visual something to visualize the netcode. Everyone can feel bad netcode in a game, but to see the red-blue wireframe models aligning is just to show the difference between tick rates. Everyone understands that a faster tick rate is better. It's going to be more accurate. But when you see just how misaligned a character is, it's no wonder that you, you can fire an arrow in Overwatch and it just goes missing. 
It's like, well, I saw it hit his head, but apparently that guy's just shot me in the face after I've already killed him. That's a great thing to do. And he's like, oh, we know how annoying it can be. Yeah, it can be annoying. But the bigger issue is how much it grinds you down over time. It just... There's a little chip in the enjoyment every time. And by the end, after you've seen it for the thousandth time, it's like, oh, I would have just won the game, but that arrow just went, just vanished, and now he's got his ult off and killed my entire team. That's awesome. It can really affect your morale. And so these little things, the, the net code, the tick rate, the, the servers around the world, add up to build just an overall superior nicer more fluid experience that i don't want to stop playing at the moment i'm loving it and this is why i'm making videos this is why i'm going to start streaming it on twitch if you're interested in watching me play it on twitch click the link below hit the follow button and i will see you over there i love these videos i love what they're doing i'm loving the game if you want to see more content like this subscribe on youtube hit the notification bell and you will get alerted to all this stuff i'm also going to start trying to do some gaming industry news content as well we'll see how that goes i'm gonna mix that in with the valorant content and yeah we'll carry on with that into the future so thanks for watching i'll see you over on twitch and with that enjoy hope you liked the video and i will see you in the next one Goodbye.